Hey, what's happening y'all? Today's film is gonna be a little bit different, but before I get too far into it, I gotta address something that has circled back to me literally like 10 times. Apparently there's some dust up on Facebook where my name is being used on teaching people incorrectly how to do skulls and uh, Man, I wasn't even invited to the dance. Just to be clear, I'm not on Facebook. Never been on Facebook, never going on Facebook. I did just look and see if there was other white bone creations on there and I found four of them that are not me. So if you're getting a response via Facebook from white bone creations, be gen clear that it is not me. Don't know what was said, don't really care. That's not my business, that's kind of just outside gossip, but in case anybody got a dirty taste with regards to the white bone creations name on that platform not i all right today i'm gonna take and i'm gonna show you boiling versus maceration the reason i brought up the facebook thing is because it sounds like um people are saying that boiling is bad for bone it don't boil he's teaching you wrong all that stuff i have no position do not care what method of skull cleaning you do. Doesn't matter to me at all. I boil and the reason I show people the boiling method is because I've had so much success through the years doing it. There is no right method. With every method there's a positive and there is a negative and I don't care if it's beetles, I don't care if it's maceration, I don't care if it's boiling, I don't care if it's piranha, I don't care if you're putting it in crab traps and letting sea lice and everything get to it. I don't care if it's an anthill. I don't care if it's burying, rot off, all of them, positives, negatives. So today I'm gonna cover just the facts, no agenda. You get to choose. I would encourage you to always, always, always figure out what you want. What is your end game? Do you want a perfect skull full of nose bones and ear butts and everything's good? Or do you want a completely degreased skull missing a few of those things? Do you want it in a timely fashion? Do you want it to be museum quality? Do you want it to be natural? The bottom line in all of this is you have to decide what is right for you, whether that's a financial situation, whether that's room and space, whether it's odor control, what you want to see in a skull. I get people all the time, hey, don't use the peroxide. I want it to look natural, perfectly fine. People say, hey man, I want it to look white as possible. Even if it's a little bit chalky, I don't want any grease. No problem, it's up to you. Whatever your end result is or your customer's end result is, that's the method I think you should be choosing. So, today, I'm gonna take one animal and do two methods on that same animal. I'm gonna take a domestic sheep. I'm gonna cut him right down the middle from his nose, between his horns, across the back of his head, through the brain hole. I'm gonna macerate one side, I'm gonna boil the other side. I'm gonna give you times, I'm gonna give you positives, I'm gonna give you negatives. I want you to look at both these skulls, I want you to decide, just so we're crystal clear. Boiling does not damage bone, overboiling damages bone. Over maceration damages bone. Too much grease removal damages bone. Too much sunlight damages bone. Just keep in mind, too much of something is not good on bone. So let's find a way to get it done within the time frame that it needs to be done under any method and go from there. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, in order to uh, save myself a whole bunch of stink because this happens at my house, I went ahead and just shook the brain out of both sides. I'll boil one. And I'll macerate one. We'll see how it goes. You can see how heavy that bone is in here. Why that part of the uh, skull would color up. All right, let's go. Yo, check this out. I called the boys over at Bridger Boiler and said, "Hey, would it be all right if I talked about your product?" If you're traveling from state to state right now, with the laws in place from chronic wasting disease, you can't travel over state line with any of your deer species that have brains, eyes, and that stuff in there. And I'm not just talking about taking it to the car wash and blowing out brains, but if that brain liner's in there, you're in trouble and they could essentially take all your game, your game meat, and then you could lose hunting privileges. Not cool. These boys made a portable answer for cleaning your skulls when you're on location, whether that's a pack-in hunt or a pickup hunt or whatever. 
everything's included in here. It's really, really cool to check this out. Bridger Boiler. I strongly recommend you picking one up if you're traveling out of state and you need to clean your skulls to come back into your state. All right, I got it all set up. I'm gonna drop the sheep in there, fill it with water, start my boil. Then I'm gonna take the other half, drop it right down in this Yeti bucket, fill it full of water, put the lid on it, set it in the sun. Now back to the boil. Eight minutes in, and I'm ready to pull it out and start washing. Because it's cut in half, I'm not gonna be able to smack that horn with a hammer and knock it off. So I'm gonna power wash into every hole and every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away. Now that I've got everything cleaned off and I've got it pretty well loosened up, I'm gonna apply a little pressure and see if I can pop this horn off. I'm gonna take a sawzall, cut the horn core, finish power washing all that up. Then I'm gonna wash the horn itself in and out really, really well. I'm gonna wash up my pot, fill it full of water, and then add about a half gallon of aqua silk. This is a pool shock oxidizer that has 27% by volume liquid peroxide in it and I get it from a Leslie's pool supply. From here I'm going to drop that skull right down into that color batch and bring it to a boil. The last step in the cleaning process here is just to rinse off all the peroxide. Anything that I could have missed will now be like this gelatinous yellow that will just come right off and then I'm going to set it in front of a fan to dry. Fast forward 24 hours, I put a coat of mop and glow on it, and the whole process wound up being a handling time of about 18 minutes. All right, so the boil, half skull thing, 18 minutes. And I'm only talking about the times that I was working on that skull, right? I did a black buck, I did several other animals in the mix. That's a real fast exaggeration of what I did, but the actual bring it to a boil, spraying, and then mop it glowing, that was 18 minutes all total. There was 24 hours worth of dry time and things of that nature. What I'm trying to get at is the actual time of cleaning the skull because the dry time would be the same for maceration as it would for whatever. Anyway, this is the far extreme and I think there's no argument with the time frame. That's not where we're at. That other half skull, I filmed it every week for four weeks. It was beautiful, everything turned out so good and I deleted all the footage right before a fishing trip and that's my fault. So what I did is I had several of these sheep. I just cut another one and put the whole thing in the barrel. This is a look at it at the one week mark. Now mind you, I'm using a Yeti bucket with a clear lid, pretty warm climate here in Southern California so I'm getting some ultraviolet what is happening with maceration is the bacteria is eating away at all the flesh that's on the bone, right? You're just letting nature take its course. The only benefit to me doing it the first time and then the second time is I'm able to sample a few things. So there's people who talk about changing the water and how important the water change is. The first time I just went four straight weeks and it was clean. This time, I changed it every week, and I think it actually speeds up the process. I don't know how, being that we're washing flesh and getting rid of that bacteria, but maybe it does. Maybe it just gets to a certain point and stops. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it. I just know how it works. So this is the look at the one-week mark. The horn cores come off beautifully. It has this, like, sort of rust on the outside of the horn and everything. It just rinsed right off. And this is a look at it now at week two. For sure, nobody sugarcoats the smell. Like that is one of the things with this, you will just not forget. So you, those moments of stink are pretty temporary, but it is the worst stink, that bacteria that's in the buckets. Make sure you're wearing gloves. Uh, well, let's, let's go.
This is probably not a fair piece right here, but I've never done anything but hit this with the hose. You've seen everything I've done to this, and it's clean. Got a couple little pleat pieces in here. It does have a little of that corp corpse wax on it. It's a non-issue. We did lose a little nasal stuff there. And the teeth are super wiggly. Something you don't get with boiling. You can see how loose the skull is. Now the original skull I macerated wasn't this wiggly, so it could be part of it being headshot here. No big deal. I have that skull. That's the one I'm going to show you. I just lost the footage. So I'm going to turn off the heat on this whitening mix. I just finished a few pigs. I'm going to drop that skull down in there just two or three minutes, let it whiten and do a little bit of degreasing. Then I'll just power wash off all the loose debris. I set this thing in front of a fan overnight to dry. I put on a coat of mop and glow. And here's a look at the final skull maceration on one side, boiling on the other. Let's go over the pros and cons. Yo, what do you say we wrap up this boiling? I, I shouldn't have termed it versus because I don't mean it to be versus. I mean, be like boiling and maceration, maybe a comparison between the two, not a challenge between the two. Okay, so uh, here we go. This is the skull that I boiled. This is the skull that I macerated originally. This is the same, this is the same animal, essentially. What I'd like to do, and this is the one that you actually got to see the, the footage of, right? This one had gotten shot in the head. And anyway, they, they look identical. Let's do this. Let's take boiling first, which is this side. And let's cover some of the uh, pros first. So the, some of the pros to boiling is that it's fast, right? No real argument there that it is faster. It's odor free, meaning I don't, in comparison, it doesn't have near the amount of odor. Typically when it's fresh, it just smells like you're boiling uh, a little bit of meat in like a laundry detergent or something like that. So those are the pros. The cons to boiling are in comparison, it is extremely expensive versus maceration because you're buying boiling equipment, pots, things like that. If you do what I do, then you are uh, buying a power washer, you have chemicals involved. There's quite a bit of expense that's involved in that process. Um, and then one of the cons would be um, over boiling where a lot of the stigmatism comes from with this. It's really easy to mess it up. You can go too far in short order. So that would be the pros and cons to boiling. Now on the maceration side, the pros, no tooling. Right, use very little investment. You can get started just with a bucket and a, a hose, if you will. Water, the hose is not really critical. Water. Um, this just makes it perfect for a tight budget to macerate. Uh, it's, it has a beautiful finish. To be real honest with you, I think they look almost identical, but now this one being done, the boiling being done for almost two months, and this one being done for three weeks, this one to me looks smoother in a few areas. I think when they level out the same time frame, I think they're going to look identical. That's just me. Um, probably the biggest pro for most everybody is with the maceration is no removal of the nose bones and earbuds. Um, it creates more of that museum quality look, which I think is uh, 
where a lot of the hype comes from. They want everything there, and I have no issues with that. Of course, I think that's that's beautiful. I prefer it gone, um, but that's just me. Um, the cons, um, odor. We talk about it over and over and over again, but it's definitely a new stink. There's that smell where something starts to get uh, funky, then there's stink, then there's sour, and then there's maceration. And I'm not kidding you, something about it is very diapery. All right, um, time, it's considerably longer, but in the same breath, if you're doing like 20, 30 pieces and you get them in those buckets, you can do it pretty quick, right? So once it's in there and everything's ready to go, you can just have a whole day of rinsing off stuff and letting it dry. The odor piece I want to just emphasize is very temporary. It doesn't take very long. Once it's dry, it's almost essentially gone. Um, degreasing is one of the things that I probably should have put on the pros to boiling and a con for maceration. If you're gonna whiten with a little bit of a boil at the end, you're gonna remove a lot of grease, but by boiling, you're opening up porous bone and you're leaching out a lot of oil. As to where the maceration doesn't degrease, this is just my opinion, right? Doesn't degrease as well initially. Um, and then the last thing is loose teeth and bone. Both of these that I've done, they have, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but they have loose teeth and loose bone uh, it's an easy fix with a little bit of super glue on the inside of the teeth. Not so much even an issue. Um, I want to pull some close-up shots and I want you to be able to look at these two together, make sort of your own comparison, figure out where, which one makes sense for you. Again, there is no right answer and there is no wrong answer. I'm simply here to pass on some information and really encourage you to take those animals that you're, you're hunting, harvesting or if you're just interested in them and you kind of dig skulls this is a very 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 cool place to be because you get to learn a lot about the animal uh, I think it's a positive skill to have and um, I don't know you're uh, you're preserving something long term it's a great conversation piece great for a science lab great for kids they can look and see how the nasal cavity and the eyes and the ears are all connected into the brain right then you get to show them the brain that wavy brain look all of it um anyway like always thank you so much for watching thanks for being here with me if you have questions please shoot me a comment and we'll uh planes i love you <laughs> all right thank you for watching